Welcome aboard. It's time to grab your wave, swim out into the ocean, and pick that sales pipeline as it starts to peak over the horizon there and see if you can ride along with it uh, as we talk. Bring in the man who put the spring in spring baseball, Matt Hines. So spe- speaking of spring there, Paul, uh, when last we chatted, you were lamenting the fact that there was actually water falling from the sky in Southern <laughs> yes. California. Oh, has that crisis been averted? That crisis has passed. The sun is shining. All is good. And uh, we, we try and forget about those dark days when it rains here in Southern <laughs> California. Oh, man. Well, as we record this here today, uh, thank you for those of you that are joining us on Sales Pipeline Radio Live as we record every Thursday at 1130 Pacific, 230 Eastern. Uh, recording today live from Heinz Marketing World Headquarters in Redmond, Washington. It is a beautiful day. It is going to be 80 degrees. Uh, the nice thing about living up here in the Pacific Northwest is the uh, the l- summer days and the late spring days, they just kind of keep going. Uh, we are going to have uh, daylight until about 915, 920 today. Uh, so it should be a nice day. So wherever you're listening to Sales Pipeline Radio today, hope you're enjoying your Thursday. If you're listening to us through the podcast, uh, thank you very much for subscribing. You can catch us uh, every new episode through the iTunes Store and Google Play. And as always, every episode of Heinz, or excuse me, every episode of Sales Pipeline Radio is available past, present, and future on SalesPipelineRadio.com. We feature every week some of the best and brightest names in sales and marketing and b2b today is no different we are very excited to have with us mike braun he is the director of marketing operations at tableau software uh tableau uh many of you know uh doing some really innovative things on the marketing side uh and mike has been there for uh, quite a while and uh, talk a little about uh, marketing ops marketing tech mike thanks so much for joining us today thanks for having me on matt i know we've had a connection uh through a common employee nicole uh, over the years but and it seems like more recently we've had other people trying to connect us, whether that's vendors or other past colleagues. So excited to be able to do that via your radio show. Yeah, I appreciate it. And I think, uh, you know, was you know, some of the notes we were looking, talking about uh, before the show and things you guys are working on. I mean, you, you have one of the more, I think, ambitious agendas for a marketing operations team I've seen with some of the things you guys are doing. And so I wanted to spend a little time digging into those and learning what you guys are doing to help give other people that are trying to let, you know, raise the game of their marketing operations team a little bit. Um, you know, one thing I know we talked about is, is, is the what you guys call cross-channel orchestration. Um, and I think that yeah, I interpret that as the idea of, you know, taking what you're doing in marketing and and ensuring that there is better, tighter integration of, of messages and offers across channels. Talk a little bit about what that looks like for you and, and what you're doing to get there. Yeah, I think I think this has a lot of movement in it right now, and you see a lot more technology popping up to try and support this idea. For us, cross-channel orchestration means a couple things. Um, one, just that, trying to make sure that the different channels we're marketing across are going to be coordinated, delivering a similar message feel. So that could be something that looks like the same experience and messaging on the website, from our emails, from our display ads, and would be a good example there. And then I think the other thing that... that is related and kind of falls into that same bucket for us is, um, you know, with, with the giant MarTech space and stack that a lot of people are operating with, it's making sure that these tools are talking together. So you've got tools like UserMind and Lytx and different things that are allowing these SaaS platforms to kind of centralize in a hub and either action off of or um, create segments for and deploy out um, into those channels. And so just a lot of focus there and making sure that, um, you know, we're allowing systems to talk to each other and channels to talk to each other wherever we can. And how hard is that to do if you've got, you know, a larger marketing team and you've got, uh, you know, different siloed channels? Is that something that is, you know, does that have to be driven by the top? Does that have to be driven by someone like yourself who can span across that? Or how, how do you sort of do the orchestration when you've got a matrix organization to begin with? It's a good question, and honestly, we're trying to figure it out as we go right now. You know, we, we don't have this thing solved. We're in the middle of working this. Um, but with the with the example where we're talking about marketing through display and email, it, it is um, it is an effort being kind of driven out of our marketing operations team, and then just really partnering closely with the digital marketing teams, for example, social teams, um, and trying to get them on board. Explain, you know, everybody's aware of the advantage and the experience that that's going to be able to improve uh, for our customers and prospects, and then it's just trying to organize that, and then um, a lot of the data work behind the scenes to get to um, actually make the connections work. And I know, like, we're talking about orchestration across channels, but I think there's a 
a coordination effort required as well to tell a real sort of a story of the marketing of the influence marketing is having uh, across the entire buying journey. So talk a little bit about what work you guys have done to tell a story from impression to close deals. Like how are you tying all of those parts of the buying journey together to create a complete story of what's working, but also to create a, a complete story of marketing's impact? Yeah, this is this is really cool for us. Um, you know, we're able to achieve a lot of this stuff just because of the, the bright people we have on our teams. And so we've got a, a marketing engineering team um, with some database engineers that really make this this work. Um, but our website is, is built on Drupal. Um, it, it will that capture um, engagements on the website, both where they have come from, from a lot of the times from U, uh, URL parameters, as well as the information about the offer that they're landing on. Store those interactions in almost like a Google Analytics style database, so you can really have that full um, anonymous visitor view. And uh, we're, at, we're an Eloqua shop, so Eloqua provides us a GUID, which is like essentially a, a cookie ID that's associated to all those interactions. Um, and then as, as conversions happen, move into your marketing automation platform, and then move into your CRM, we're starting to associate, uh, pass that GUID through to those contacts, um, allow the, that data to be joined there, and then through campaign membership in our CRM, which is Salesforce, um, tie those to our leads and contacts. And then as those leads and contacts become um, part of opportunities and deals in the CRM database, um, we're able to tie that whole picture together. So you've really got this, this website visitor database, you've got your conversion database uh, in terms of leads and contacts, and then you've got your deals that are closing, and you're able to tie those, um, those three phases together through data points provided along the way. So I, I, a couple of follow-up questions. I think a lot of people trying to trying to make this attribution story end-to-end -end work, um, a lot of people say easier said than done. What have been some of the challenges you have faced or roadblocks you've faced along the way of building that journey and that other people, that other people might want to be aware of to try to avoid? Um, I'd say one of the biggest learnings is trying to get the whole like ad impression part there, and, and we're, st we're still working on that part. Um, that, that's a tricky part. Um, and we're looking at creating almost just a, a total repository of every single ad that we have to be able to, to track that. Some other learnings that we've had and some things to um, try and avoid, I'd say, is just understanding the limitations of the systems that you're working with. Uh, we're, we're something like Drupal is open source, and you've got developers to be able to to operate there, something like a Salesforce or Eloqua has some limitations, and so um, a lot of planning and mapping out all the data scenarios is um, invaluable before you really get started in the execution phase. So we, we definitely had a couple bumps in that area, um, but have learned and are, are making some good progress in this area. And you know, it'd be a lot easier if everything our prospects and customers are doing was done on digital, right? But there's interactions mm -hmm. that are happening offline as well, whether it's through events, through the sales organization. Uh, how do you account for some of those offline interactions? And is there, a, is there a clean way to include those as part of the attribution story? Yeah, I think there is. Um, it, it's a good question, though. The offline channel, I guess you'd call it, needs to be a part of those different data scenarios that you're mapping out. And, and the way that we make that happen is just by providing an, another ID. So we've just got, we have IDs all over the place to make this, this work um, that, it, that is associated to a campaign level effort. So as those new leads get imported and associated to events, they also have an ID that then uh, is tied back to campaigns so we can understand attribution to a, a campaign level effort as well as to the offline channel of an event itself. Awesome. Well, we're talking to Mike Braun today. He's the Director of Marketing Operations for Tableau Software. And got just a couple more minutes before we got to take a quick break, but wondering if you can also talk about what you guys are doing with predictive lead scoring. I think predictive has been a frothy topic for a lot of B2B marketers the last couple of years. Um, has been a difficult nut to crack for a lot of companies as well. And just curious, you know, what's your approach to lead, to lead scoring as well as sort of predictive uh, account selection for more of your uh, named accounts? Yeah, um, I'm excited about this area. We, we've been longtime users of Predictive for about four years. Um, really using it um, as a mechanism to drop out low-level quality leads um, has been really valuable for us. So uh, we produce a lot of traffic and new leads through our trial experience. 
We have operated with the belief of just allowing people to use the product freely without validating email address or anything like that. So, you know, the product will sell itself. What that ends up doing is creating a lot of leads where there's junk data. And so predictive lead scoring has really allowed us to scale out the identification of junk and really remove um, 10% of our lead volume globally while touching virtually zero revenue um, through predictive lead scoring, which has been really cool. Um, and we're really excited to start a new partnership with Sixth Sense, who is starting to play in the side of predictive on the behavioral side. And um, we've just signed on with them. We're getting started with uh, data intake, and we'll begin our modeling journey here shortly. And I'm, I'm really excited at the potential that they offer, because if you think about the old lead scoring way, you have the explicit and impl implicit score, where a lot of people had that matrix-style score that would come out A1s, B2s, et cetera. Predictive in the past has really been around that kind of like fit side. And Sixth Sense has started to introduce predictive on the behavioral side, which I think has a lot of power. And a lot of the times your most successful triggers for, for sending leads to sales are on the behavior themselves and not just the fit. It is that behavior that you, that is being observed in your own instant in your own environment. Is that behavior externally? Is it combining the two together? It's combining the two together, and that's what makes it really powerful. So it's taking the first-party data that we're going to have on our CRM, um, Eloqua, and on our website, as well as um, external data that they're going to be able to provide to us through search intent outside in the in the B2B web, as they call it. <laughs> Mike, how many vendor pitches do you receive every week? <laughs> Very few because I just don't pick up the phone a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I got to imagine though, in addition, well, in addition to the phone, you must just get, you know, I mean, emails and everything else. And I know we're gonna have to take a break here in a second, but I mean, each, each one of these focus areas, I mean, obviously there is there is usually a solution, uh, sort of external solution that helps with that. Um, but uh, when we come back to the break here, I want to talk a little more about not just uh, you know what you're looking for with vendors, uh, but also sort of how do you decide what goes into your tech stack? How do you manage it? How do you optimize it over time? Uh, we're going to have a lot more here. we got to take a quick break, pay some bills. We'll a lot more with Mike Braun from uh, Tableau here after the break. You're listening to Sales Pipeline Radio. <laughs> In a world where the speed of innovation and change in B2B marketing has never been greater, the only thing bigger is the need for clarity, for a blueprint, for a guide to what's really working. And how about a way to apply it specifically today to increase sales pipeline growth, velocity, and most of all, conversion? That's what you'll find in the Modern Marketer's Field Guide. And amazingly, you can download it for free. HeinzMarketing.com, just like it sounds, H-E-I-N-Z-M-A-R-K-E-T-I-N-G. It encompasses the entire sales and marketing cycle, but in quick bursts with lots of specific, actionable ideas, strategies, tactics you can put to work right away, like today. The loaded table of contents helps you narrow in and tackle a problem, and it's something you can come back to over and over again as a reference guide. Why not download your free copy of the Modern Marketer's Field Guide? It's free. HeinzMarketing.com, just like it sounds. H-E-I-N-Z, marketing.com. All right, back to Matt and his guest. Thank you very much. If you like what you're hearing today, uh, got a ton of th ton more questions for Mike here, uh, talking about marketing operations and uh, revenue ops in general. Uh, if you like what you're hearing, you can definitely check out uh, this episode, share it with your friends by going to salespipelineradio.com here in a couple days. Coming up over the next couple weeks on Sales Pipeline Radio next week, we're keeping it in the family. We've got uh, Mike's boss, Elisa Fink. She's the CMO of Tableau. We're going to be focusing most of the conversation on what she thinks of Mike uh, and what she wishes he would be doing better. I'm kidding. We're not going to be talking about that. Elisa's been and she's been at Tableau uh, since almost the beginning, uh, and so she started, she's seen a very early stage startup uh, get very big and very successful. We're going to talk about what it takes to manage a marketing effort um, in different stages. Week after that, we've got Dave Gerhardt. He's the VP of Marketing at Drift. If you're not familiar with Drift, uh, they, are, they are attempting to eliminate the landing page, eliminate forms as it relates to B2B marketing. They've got an innovative approach they're using to get there. And then uh, on the middle of May, I'm going to be out, but we've got Brian Hansford. He's, uh, he runs our marketing performance management group. He's going to have a special guest talking about attribution. 
and how to manage marketing in a more uh, strategic way. But today we got a little more with time with Mike Brand or Mike Mike Brand. He's the uh, director of marketing operations at Tableau Software. And before the break, I kind of asked you a question about vendors reaching out to you. And you know, you may not pick up your phone, but uh, you definitely have an email address. And uh, I imagine you, like me, are seeing both good pitches and bad pitches. I'm curious. You know, as someone who I'm assuming receives plenty of pitches in the mail, uh, what are things that stand out to you, both good and bad? Um, it's a good question, and most of it does reach me through email at this point. It's important to really understand, though, that, like as part of as a marketing operations person, part of my job is to continuously be examining the Martech space, um, and so marketing technology gets brought up to us through two ways really I think of like one one need and two opportunity and I think I think we're talking a little bit more about the opportunity side here and so well it's part of our job to be aware of what's happening in the space figuring out where we have opportunity is comes along with that and then as we start to get the sales pitches our way emails and calls being able to speak to how we can realize that opportunity um, is what will catch my eye so uh, maybe it's something about as simple as enriching data, how, how that's going to affect uh, the rest of our story. We just talked about a bunch about predictive modeling, and th the health of your data is so important there to really um, be able to have a, a strong model. And so if, if they can kind of expose lots of use cases and ways that their product's going to be able to have impact in there, as well as something I probably already have my eye on, from examining the MarTech, MarTech space is where um, I'll usually latch on to and, and start to engage. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I was not expecting you to say you print out a copy of the marketing technology landscape of, you know, 6,800, you know, products and just start circling companies you want to hear from, right? I think, it, you know, and focusing on where your need is, is is what most companies do. How, how do you balance, and, and I know this can be tricky, but, you know, if, if you look at your operations and you say, where are we weak or where are we manual or we need to be automated, where... Where are the constraints in our funnel that we need to sort of make better? I mean, there's opportunity there, but how do you balance that with also, you know, realizing you don't know what you don't know and knowing that, you know, some vendors clearly are going to come in and, and maybe have some insights or a reframe that can help you as well. Um, you know, you could spend all day long taking those meetings, but you can't do that. So how do you balance those two, the, the push and pull of that? It's a good question. I don't know if anybody's perfect at that or has that part mastered. I mean, because honestly, a lot of it, a lot of what we do ends up getting brought up through need. It's, it's need from our marketers. It's uh, need from sales. Um, you know, brought up, hey, we need to do this. How can we do this? I'm, I've heard about this. You get a lot of it that way. And that's usually kind of where you end up prioritizing. The fun stuff is where you get to recognize opportunity um, and then pr like propose some business value and, and make moves that way. Um, but I'd say, you know, a majority of the time it's coming through need of, of the business and, and then kind of diving into where uh, MarTech might be able to fulfill that need. So Tableau continues to grow. Uh, your, the reach of Tableau and the size of your, your business and your customer base continues to grow. With that, the sales numbers continue to get larger and more complex. You know, A lot of companies, as they grow, have different ways of managing their marketing operations. Some continue to have a centralized effort. Some you know, start to break that up uh, and have managed efforts more uh, locally or, or based on certain divisions. It seems like the Tableau approach has been more centralized. Now, you've spent a lot of time in the last year building out a center of excellence. Talk a little bit little bit about how Tableau has approached and centralized marketing operations to drive performance. Yeah, this has been an interesting topic for me. Um, I, don't, I don't know if anybody follows um, any of the other podcasts, but about a year ago, I, I was on with the Relationship One podcast as we were really staffing this center of excellence um, 12 months ago. And so this is actually a new approach for Tableau. For a long time, it, it, we took a decentralized approach. We had the marketing managers themselves uh, executing campaigns within Eloqua. But again, like you said, with the growth of Tableau, that was a, t you know, a different shop. That was a much smaller operations where you had uh, generalists in positions. And as Tableau's grown, you have special, uh, specialized people coming in and, and really um, being experts in certain areas. And part of that drove a lot of the decision to start centralizing uh, the execution of, of marketing campaigns through Eloqua. And so that's what we did. We, uh, we built a centralized team. Um, we've, been, we've had this team for about 13 months, as I'd say, and I've learned a ton. I mean, if I could go back, we'd, we'd do so many different things um, a different way. And I think some of the most important things in learning that I've had out of that is 
really understanding accountability throughout the process from from beginning to end. And this might be a little bit extreme, but I think a good way to, to kind of paint the picture is it, it's you have marketers that are kind of like the Don Draper style marketer out there, and it's like, how do you, how do you hold a, a Don Draper to a process? Because um, that's ultimately what you have to do to have a workflow that's successful in a centralized model. You have to have well-defined requirements and requests at the beginning with a timeline that's going to allow the shared resource teams to execute. Um, so that's been an, an interesting challenge for us, and it's led us to starting to uh, begin to staff a project management team here uh, within marketing operations to, to help us manage that, that whole workflow, actually. So as Tableau grows, how do you manage the need for process and discipline and sort of sc- and scalability with agility? Right? I mean, I think a lot of companies, as they grow and as they necessarily create sort of uh, sort of process and systems, it can it can also slow things down and actually you know hurt the ability to be nimble and agile. How do you how do you strike that balance, and what are you guys doing to allow you know your marketing teams to continue to to perform in a in a in an agile environment? Yeah, um, that's another one that we're kind of right in the middle of. So we took this big swing in the last year towards centralization. And to your point, you know, that slows a lot of things down. Um, So in recognizing that, a lot of the things that that we're focusing on this year is figuring out where some of those, um, like, lesser lesser tier campaigns um, can be brought back into the hands of, of the program managers themselves and allow them to be self-sufficient in the way that they execute. And so um, we're adopting some, some different tools to allow us to do that. Um, one that I'll mention is Campaign Launchpad from the Demand Gen team, where it's basically a UI that sits on top of Eloqua and offers some additional um, governance that you wouldn't have inside of Eloqua. You can lock down different parts of templates. You can say you can only send to a certain amount of people. And that allows us to put some work back in the hands of of other um, folks so that they can be more agile and nimble, like you said, and execute within templated workflows. And then our big tier one through tier three campaigns as we identify them, things like big product launches like we just did for Tableau Prep and our role-based offerings, we're still going to manage that whole huge important execution from, from our centralized team. That's awesome. Uh, I got a few more minutes here with Mike Braun. He's the director of marketing operations at Tableau, and um, you know, you mentioned earlier, and, and you know, the the things you wish you knew when you started some of these processes. So, you know, let's let's take the hypothetical and let's assume that you know, you know, in a couple months, you uh, you're no longer at Tableau, and you're, you know, impl- you know, sort of uh, member number one of a new marketing operations team at another B two B tech company. What are the things you prioritize first? I think, you know, I look at Tableau as, you know, one of a handful of companies that are really sort of at the leading edge of doing great marketing operations. Most companies are a lot further behind uh, in the maturity curve. So let's say you join one of those companies. What are the things that you focus on that you look at to get done and to get built first? Um, definitely the, the CRM solution and then the data model that needs to be put in place to to capture everything from from. Uh, the lead side to campaign side to opportunity side, and really making sure that there's a solid data structure there, and and that's going to get you started on the right foot. Normalized, clean data where you can control it. You know, it really starts with the data for me because a lot of these efforts are all pointing back to data. They're all pointing back to the need to have structured data and and data that you can use, um, whether it's segmenting or modeling, like we referenced a little bit before, but. And that's definitely the first steps I take in making sure that whatever system we're using for CRM is able to support that. Awesome. Well, when Paul's starting to give me the scissors sign, I know we're out of time. We could keep going for a long time. I've got a bunch more questions I'd love to ask. But uh, really appreciate our guest joining us today, Mike Braun. He's the VP, or excuse me, the Director of Marketing Operations at Tableau Software. If you like what you hear today, uh, definitely get a replay of this episode on salespipelineradio.com here in a couple days. We will also post a I highlight uh, Q&A from this, this conversation up on HeinzMarketing.com. Join us next week. We're going to have Mike's boss. We're not going to talk about Mike, but we're going to talk about the evolution and growth of marketing uh, with Alyssa Fink. She's the CMO of Tableau Software and lots of great episodes to come. Definitely join us next week and every week. For my great producer, Paul, this is Matt Hines. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. You've been listening to another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio, brought to you from the good folks at Matt Hines Marketing. 